the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord be with you. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil, and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Glory to the Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father, to Him be glory forever, to Him be glory forever, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. <coughs> glory to God, <coughs> glory to God, Son of the Father. To Him be glory forever, to Him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to the Spirit. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to the Spirit. To Him be glory forever. To him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading comes from the second book from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man did ho handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it's impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. 
Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that would put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. How much like the disciples are we? I think we have a lot more in common than we think. This Gospel reading finds the disciples in lockdown, just like us. The doors were locked and they were not going out. In their case, it was for fear of the Jews rather than the fear of coronavirus. In the case of the disciples, the fear of death for being associated with Jesus was real. In our case, the real prospect of catching a deadly disease that could, cost, that could kill us is what's keeping us in lockdown. But in spite of their lockdown, Jesus came among them. And his greeting was, peace be with you. The first thing that Jesus said to his disciples, the ones who were in fear of their lives, was, peace be with you. 
my personal experience of lockdown is that I have more time to be at peace with Christ. I have time to say morning prayer and it brings me peace. I have time to pray for everyone and it brings me peace. I have time to connect with more people of the parish via email and telephone calls and it brings me peace. And I actually have time to answer the telephone and strangely enough, that also brings me peace. I have also find the peace and the time to do jigsaw puzzles. I found the time to research the lives of the airmen buried in the churchyards. I found time to drink more cups of tea than I thought possible. And all of these things bring me a certain kind of peace. I realise that not all of us have that same peace. I know that there is loneliness at this time. I know that there are those who are having to work in stressful situations, both in the house and in physical workplaces. I know that there are those that can't work who want to. Yet that may be where you find your peace. But I urge you all to listen to that voice of Christ that gives his peace to all who follow him. And it is this peace that makes me realise that I have the opportunity to do what Jesus told his disciples to do. To go out and spread the good news. I found it very heartening how many hits we're getting on the daily services. And as for the Sunday services, we're getting more views than the usual Sunday attendance at Tangmere and Oving combined. I don't know what's going to happen after lockdown. But I'm sure that the parish churches will be different churches going forward. But there's always that doubting Thomas in all of us. Will there be the same appetite for Christ when all of this is over? Will we have the time or energy to continue doing it all? Will we lose those connections? I look at doubting Thomas. I know that even he looked at Jesus and said, my Lord and my God, inspired to proclaim him as Christ. So I am prepared to be inspired by the Holy Spirit to go and proclaim the good news of the risen Christ. May you also be inspired. May the risen Christ come into your lockdown and give you his peace. church. Let us affirm our faith in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. At a time when most of the world is focused understandably on battling COVID-19, we pray for all church communities, wherever they are, remembering particularly those whose true faith is challenged by those with little understanding of the harm that they do. Guide Martin, our bishop, and the team at Church House as they strive to adapt their essential responsibilities to a social distancing environment where your teachings are strikingly relevant in a world too focused on secular issues. We bring your particular attention to the brilliant virtual service that Father Trevor is providing us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide our gracious Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, whose public messages are a comfort and example to us all. Guide all her public servants at this difficult time and open the ears and hearts of that misguided minority who take no heed of the clear advice to protect society. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we bring to your gracious attention the men and women of health, social and other public services and armed forces who strive directly or indirectly for our benefit and security. Keep them safe and provide them support and succour during their daily lives of service to our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the bullied and beleaguered, the helpless and the homeless, the lonely and the unloved. Comfort, guide and heal all those who suffer in mind, body or spirit. Give comfort to them, remembering particularly all those forgotten people faced with famine, war and violence, as well as COVID, in Syria, Yemen, Sudan and elsewhere, where third-party actors are exacerbating already dreadful situations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, in a moment of silence, we offer our personal prayers for the resolution of any matter that troubles us, private or public. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill or recovering from whatever affliction, and for all who have died recently that we know, as well as those who died at this time in years gone by. Let light perpetual shine on them, and may they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we ask for your divine blessing on the people of both parishes of St Andrew and those at home in our villages. Keep them and their families and friends safe, both during this epidemic and during the months and years that follow it. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St Andrew, St Richard and all the saints, we commend ourselves to your unfailing love as we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. and cleanse me from my sin. The Lord be with you. Lift 
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of eternal life. And so, in the joy of his Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and all the powers of creation sing forever your hymn of glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. Andrew and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Son. Lord, I am not worthy to 
to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Let us pray. Lord God our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God. We thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.